Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is Force of Force StarCraft 2 Strategy, your number one location for step-by-step -step strategy and tutorial videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Zerg Muta and the Speedling Baneling. Uh, this is a very strong build versus uh, Terran opponents. Um, it's also another variation of it is known as just the, the Speedling into Muta. Um, but this is just kind of flipping that scenario, getting those Mutalists quickly, as quickly as possible, forcing your uh, Terran opponent to respond to those Mutalists, and then countering what they're responding with, which is likely to be Marines, um, by getting a ton of Speedlings and Banelings. Uh, so we're just going to be taking a look at this strategy here, see why it's effective and how it works. Um, now this strategy is coming from a replay played in the Diamond League between McMax as our Terran player and Arum, I believe that is how you pronounce that, as our Zerg player. So getting right into things, we're going to be starting the game off just by pumping out our drones. Um, just going to be going for normal, uh, getting an Overlord at 9 supply, start building your first Overlord at 9 supply, and then just keep pumping out drones. Um, now again, this strategy is going to be effective uh, for what I what's been coined as the t term forcing. Um, this is a uh, term that I, I've seen used by Day9, uh, Day9 TV. He's, this is YouTube channel, a really good uh, commentator. He does really in-depth analysis, definitely worth checking out. Um, but it's called forcing, and basically what it entails is, again, getting your opponent to have to respond to a situation by getting something, and then countering that response with whatever you're going to be getting in return. Uh, so again, in this example, we're going to be going for those fast mutalists, um, and our Terran player is likely to respond by getting a ton of marines. Um, now, in in forcing him to get that response, we're going to be countering that by getting speedlings and banelings, which do very well versus marines. Um, and the goal is to just kind of overwhelm them by putting them in that um, situation that's going to be advantageous for you and difficult for them to handle. Um, so taking a look here, we're just going with that standard 14 pool uh, followed by the extractor. Um, now you want to make sure that you saturate that extractor right away so that basically as soon as your spawning pool creates, your, um, you're going to be able to tech up straight to that layer. Although I'm not sure if he decides to go for, um, we'll find out in just a moment. Um, you're either going to be teching straight up to that layer or, yeah, we're going to be getting the queen first and we're going to be researching the um, metabolic boost. Uh, for the Zerglings, basically getting that Zergling speed. Um, now getting that Zergling speed early uh, has its advantages. Um, for one, it allows you to kind of put some sort of containment on your opponent. Um, by getting that Zergling speed, it's a very threatening force for um, any player to deal with. Um, they always have to worry about you basically running straight up into their base if they decide to move out um, and try to do an attack on you. So basically it creates some sort of um, it puts them in some sort of position where they kind of feel defensive, that they have to kind of stay in their base. Otherwise, you're just going to run straight to them and overwhelm them, just because speed links are so fast and they can take out workers um, so very quickly. Um, as you can see here, Terran player was getting a scout of the base. He does see that we're teching up to a layer. Um, so at this point, I mean, if I'm in the Terran player situation, I, I'm almost 100% certain of the fact that they're going to be going for Mutalists. I mean, teching up for a layer this quickly, um, that's basically what you can assume at that point. So our Terran player is relatively sure that that's what's going to be happening, and he's going to respond in turn by continuing the Marine production um, and actually getting two more barracks to build more Marines. Um, so, I mean, it might be a little bit of an over-response here. He seems like he's basically going for some overkill, um, but honestly, as the Zerg player, that's exactly what we're looking to have him do. That's exactly what we want. So um, the layer's just about coming in right now, and we're getting, um, we have those double extractors now. We're going to be saturating both. We need a lot of Espion in order to get those Mutalisks as quickly as possible. Um, now with the layer up, what we're going to be doing here, this is a very awesome trick. Uh, I suggest Zerg players implement this whenever possible, hiding tech. Um, basically by putting this here, um, typically a, a Terran player who's going to scan you, they're going to expect your production buildings, or I'm sorry, your tech buildings, to be somewhere around your mineral line, um, somewhere around your base, because obviously you have to build on creep. Um, so they're likely to spend their scans um, scanning right over your hatchery or your lair. Um, they aren't likely to scan the corner of your base. So in doing this, and putting an overlord somewhere on the outskirt of your base, or even putting it in another base, even bringing an overlord over here, spreading creep, and then building your spire there would work. Um, a little safer inside your base because you can defend it though. So by, by bringing an overlord over, um, as soon as your layer comes up, you can start spewing creep with that overlord and then uh, put your spire right in the corner of your base. And that way when they scan, they're not going to see the spire there. As you can see, our Terran player did put a scan right on the, um, on the 
lair here and he saw no spire so maybe he just thinks that they're not going for a spire yet but um, the spire is in the works right now so it's going to be coming sooner than he expects it to and that's kind of the point um, so yeah spires building we're uh not spending any of our Vespian, we need to save it all up so that we can get as many mutas as possible as soon as our spire is created. Um, it's going to be ready in just one moment. It looks like we're going to be able to create uh, five mutalisks right off the bat. Um, so that's going to be a pretty potent force early on. Um, now, Marines do very well against mutalisks, but the thing is, mutalisks with their speed and the fact that they are flying units are very good harassing units. They can just, you know, if they get in a position where they're not comfortable, they can just fly away, swoop back around, and attack another part of the player's base. Um, now, we, we are getting the second speed expansion up. Uh, the reason for this is twofold. We want a strong economy, we want to be able to move into the mid game. Also, uh, we're going to get access to those other Vespian guys, or so if we decide to just keep pumping out Mutalists, um, we're going to have the necessary Vespian to do so. Um, now, as you can see, we are moving out with our Mutalists right now. Um, here are those speed links that I was talking about that just in showing the Terran player kind of contain them to their base here. Um, now, mo moving up with these Mutalists, we're going to start picking off some units, uh, trying to take out some of the buildings, basically just trying to do as much damage as possible and try to be as much of a nuisance as possible. Um, now, a Terran player here did get that engineering bay uh, for two reasons. One, to get his upgrades, but also just in case we did go Mutus so he could drop some missile turrets, as you can see him doing there. Um, and that little engagement there was a good example of how uh, even just a handful of Marines can be very strong versus these expensive Mutalists. So you do just want to fly them around. Um, you want to avoid direct combat with a large group of Marines and just try to do as much harassment as possible. Um, now, taking a look back at the base while we're doing this harass, we still have things going on here. Um, we're still, you know, we're still working on our, on our, on our economy, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, not a whole lot going in this uh, player's production tab. He's concentrating very hard on the macro. There you go, finally building some Zerglings. Um, and that's going to be our transition right there. We're pumping out some Zerglings and we're dropping our Banelings nests. Now that we've ex showed our hand, basically, to the Terran player, now that we've exposed the fact that we have Mutalisks, um, he's going to kind of be forced to respond by getting all these Marines. Um, now, in, in turn, what we're going to respond with doing is getting all these Zerglings, getting a Banelings nest, and then pumping out a bunch of Banelings. Um, again, because Banelings are so very strong versus Marines. Um, Zerglings and Banelings. But we're still going to try to keep up this harass with the Mutalists. There's no reason to completely stop what you're doing just because you decide to switch your tech and switch your strategy. Um, you definitely want to still keep up the harass. Now, the Terran player did a good job of spreading out these missile turrets to try to um, basically cut back on any harassment we could get from the Mutalists. Um, you could still probably sneak in the back way over here, have your Mutalists right here, and then maybe move down to kill this right here, um, slightly out of the range of the missile turret if your Mutalists are sitting right here, or even just work on these uh, on these SCVs in this tight little corner before you get in the range of that missile turret. Um, but he's concentrating right now and just basically pumping out these speed links. Um, now the Terran player does see this, obviously. He just got that scan down, so he is well aware um, that there is a Bailing's Nest and that there are a ton of speedlings on the map. Now he's going to try to respond by getting this factory on the tech lab and uh, trying to get some siege tanks out to do some splash damage. Try to put a siege tank like maybe up here so if the Zerglings move in you can kill a, a large group of them in a one fell swoop. Um, he's also going to be researching this uh, infernal pre-igniter so for his Hellions to do more damage um, they do very well against light units such as Zerglings. Um, but again, this is just going to be too much force for the Terran player to handle. Um, we're going to have too many Bane links and too many speed links for him to take care of. Um, and we're just basically going to overwhelm him, overwhelm him. And again, that's the strategy. Um, not a bad idea while you're doing all this and while you're doing this switch to, again, continue the harassment with those Mutalisks. Um, you could move him in and pick off some buildings, pick off some units. You could you could even, for example, swoop in here, kill this SCV building that barracks and basically prevent him from doing that. Um, now the Terran player here is looking to do some sort of a drop with some of his marines, try to do a little harassment of his own. Um, unfortunately it is going to come too late for him. Um, and yeah, getting ready for other possible tech switches by getting this infestation pit. Um, infestors with their fungal growth are going to do very well versus mass groups of marines. Um, also getting this research for our zerglings, the um, melee attack level 1. Um, and kind of not moving out until we get that. Um, really important to get upgrades, um, very beneficial for you. I'm going to allow you, obviously, to be at a greater advantage than your opponent. And um, again, that's just it's another example of a timing push, moving out once you get that upgrade, as soon as you get that upgrade moving out. Um, now, as you can see here, we're dropping a Nidus Canal. This is another important aspect to the strategy. 
you know, if you're going for that Muta, if you're going for that Muta Speedling Baneling build and you see that your opponent has a really strong frontal wall and you kind of don't want to risk losing all your units to it, well, what you can go ahead and do is drop this Nidus Canal um, somewhere in the back of their base. Um, so you're just going to want to get some vision in the back of their base, be it with your Mutalisk or with an Overlord, uh, start building a Nidus Canal. Um, if you can find a spot basically where they don't have fully covered, if you take a look here at our Terran player, he's still in the dark a little bit with his base here. Um, there's still spots that he can't fully see. Um, that's something you do want to take note of. As you can see, look at that. We've got the uh, we've got the Nidus Swarm spawning in right now, and he has no idea it's coming. So, so if you decide to go with this strategy, and if you're trying to move into your opponent's base and they're blocked off too heavily at the front, then go ahead and build a Nidus Canal, uh, warp a Nidus Swarm right into the back of their base, and see what damage you can do. Uh, in this specific example, it's going to be too much for the Terran player to handle. It's just going to be an overwhelming force, and you're going to see exactly what I was talking about: how strong um, speedlings and banelings are first marines. Um, as you can see, just absolutely devastating this group of marines. Not a lot they can do about it. Even with their upgrades, even with their shield, it's just way too much for them to handle. Um, continuously pumping out these reinforcements, they just keep coming. Um, and there's basically nothing that the Terran player is going to be able to do about it at this point. Uh, so yeah, guys, this has been the, uh, the Mutalisk into Speedling Baneling build. Uh, very strong versus Terran players when implemented correctly, kind of forcing forcing your opponent to go for one situation and responding with another. Um, that really is just a big part of StarCraft II strategy in general, um, putting your opponent in a position that's advantageous to you. Um, so again, going over these things real quick, going over the kind of build order and the general idea, the general strategy. Um, we, <clears throat> we started off just by pumping out drones, and getting that Overlord and Night Supply, keep pumping drones. We went with the spawning pool at 14, followed by the extractor. Um, and then shortly thereafter, we're going to be getting our second extractor because we want to saturate both of these since we need so much Vespian to get those early mutas. Uh, as soon as we get our first 100 gas, you want to tech up to your layer. Um, once your layer is done building, go ahead and build your spire. Um, and a really good trick here, again, is trying to hide the spire uh, by building it in the corner of your base from spewing creep from an overlord as opposed to putting it right in the center where one scan will reveal all your tech. Um, and then basically just getting mutas as quickly as possible, doing as much harassment as you can, and then switching into that speedling baneling to take out their response to those mutalists, which is likely to be marines. Um, so again, guys, this has been 4 StarCraft 2 strategy. If you like our videos and you like what you see here, please do subscribe to our channel. Uh, please keep watching and keep owning, guys.